Hi folks, this is Dr. Rob Sivis and you know recently I've kind of had an aha moment about a topic that I just had an epiphany on. It just was so obvious to me as I understood this and it is talked about a little bit in the literature but nobody's really put this together. So I'm going to try to put this together for you today and what we're talking about is acid reflux, heartburn and carbohydrates and I did a, uh, a video a little while ago on a new medication that we're using, and I've been using it myself uh, to experiment with it, to understand it, and I, I had some epiphanies from the, the comments that you guys made in the comment section on that video, and then also my own experience, and it just, it seems so obvious once you see this pathway clearly, and what I look for in, in, in everything in science and in my clinical practice is clarity of the pathway. The path is true. Sometimes you can't see it for the forests and the bushes and the, and the twists and turns. But there's great clarity here. So let's talk about it. For those of you that have acid reflux, for those of you that have tried a carnivore diet and suddenly found magically that the acid reflux got better, that you were able to throw your pralisic and your omeprazole and things away because you didn't have it that often, or you could take your omeprazole every now and then, but the reflux went away. I've still got the hiatal hernia. Why has my reflux gone away? And we've also combined that with a medication that we started using, very effective, love this medication. And I'm not a medication guy. I am not a medication guy. I don't prescribe a lot of meds. I'm not a, not a fan of medications. I'm not that doc that throws meds at people. Quite frankly, I like to take people off. But using this medication, just epiphany. So there's a medication I took called, G uh, it's a GLP-1 agonist, a glycogen-like polypeptide or glycogen-like peptide number one. And what this medication does is it produces, it, it supercharges the release, the production and the release of GLP-1 by the upper intestine and the lower intestine. Now, why is that important? Because most people are talking about insulin, some people are talking about glucagon, but most people are not talking about glucagon-like peptide. I hope I said that correctly earlier on. Glucagon-like peptide. I'm just going to call it GLP-1. But GLP-1, because it was discovered late, doesn't have the spotlight on it and probably should almost as much as insulin gluco. GLP-1 is a hormone that gets released in the upper intestine as well as the lower intestine and the brain. And GLP-1 gets released in response to food, in particular carbohydrates. It's a so-called incret, and there are a couple of them, two or three of them that are out there. Forget about the, the scientific nomenclature, but what GLP-1 does is several things. First of all, it radically reduces the contraction of the intestine. It slows the stomach down and it's dose dependent. So the stomach doesn't, uh, the stomach stays full for a much longer period of time. Secondly, it allows a slower release of food from the stomach. And when that food gets to the lower part of the intestine, so the upper part of the GLP-1, upper intestine GLP-1 release, slows down intestinal, uh, slows down stomach emptying. It also, that upper intestinal release, triggers the release of insulin. So you've got this blip, this early blip of insulin release, and it blocks glucagon. So it's saying to insulin, dude, there's sugar coming at you, get ready, get pre-released. And it's saying, hey, glucagon, you that's releasing sugar into the bloodstream, stop doing that. So it reduces the release of sugar and it switches you from a catabolic phase, a breakdown phase, to an anabolic phase, which is where now there's incoming, you have to store and distribute this. So that's what, that's what that upper level of GLP-1 does. As the fat and the other food that travels through the intestine gets to lower intestine, a little bit lower down, that triggers a second release of GLP-1 that goes back to the brain and says, dude, you're full. It is your satiety hormone. Now, one of the other things that GLP-1 does very aggressively because it's triggered in the upper release, is triggered by sugar in particular, is it makes you feel queasy, it makes you feel sick to your stomach, it makes you feel like shit. 
eh, I'm nauseated, I'm throwing up, I'm, I feel miserable. When you eat carbohydrates, it doesn't do it when you eat protein and fat. It does not, there's no upper intestinal GLP-1 response when you eat fat because you don't need insulin. So you don't get that insulin bump right at the beginning. And you don't feel like crap because you want that stuff to go through the intestine when the fat, especially the soluble fat, goes through very quickly, triggers that lower uh, intestinal GLP-1, which says, brain, dude, you're full. And if you're eating sequentially, if you're eating slowly, you eat much less and you feel full for a very long period of time as that food is now being digested by the intestine. Just a beautiful thing, the way the human body works. But GLP-1 reduces glucose production by the liver, increases insulin, which is the removal of glucose, and helps with diabetes. But the epiphany was this. Oh, everyone's got a reflux. The amount of people taking a meprazole, the amount of people taking PP1, uh, 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 um, proton pump inhibitors, PPIs, this medication that is highly toxic to the kidney, that's an awfully, now we've discovered, a dangerous medication where even the drug companies that produce it say, don't take it for longer than six weeks to six months. It's a bad drug. But I need it for my reflux. Well, the needed and reason you have reflux is because of your carbohydrate consumption. Now you're taking a toxic medication to get rid of your reflux or to control your reflux instead of just coming off the damp sugar and starch. But we didn't have clarity on that. We weren't sure what caused the reflux. Oh, it's your hiatal hernia, half your stomach's up in your chest. Oh, it's caffeine. Oh, it's spicy food. Oh, it's... Folks, it's sugar and starch. It's carbohydrates. It's GLP-1 mediated. And if you don't trigger GLP-1, you don't get that response. And the healthiest way to do that is on a carnivore diet. Now, they're producing more and more GLP-1 agonists to make eating carbohydrates problematic. So that diabetics eat less carbohydrate and their diabetes gets better and it works. But it works particularly well in terms of eating less for weight loss, for improvement of insulin resistance. When you go mostly carnivore or eat uh, leafy vegetables, not the starchy vegetables, and mostly an animal-based diet. Works incredibly well for weight loss and for rapid correction of the insulin resistance. But that's not why I'm talking about it. I'm talking about it because the epiphany is that carbohydrates cause acid reflux. Carbohydrates cause acid reflux by a massive release of upper intestinal GLP-1 that affects the rate at which the stomach empties, the stomach works. Simple. Simple to understand, simple strategy to correct, tougher to do in practice. But how many people have I not operated on? How many surgeries, how many tens of thousands, it's the second commonest operation I do, is anti-reflux surgery. Tens of thousands of patients I've operated on. And millions, billions of people across the world suffering from acid reflux. Millions of people taking toxic proton pump inhibitors and all these medications to deal with their reflux. Because they can't get away from and don't understand the carbohydrates. So, folks, GLP-1 is an incredibly important hormone, especially triggering so many of the diseases. And more and more, the drug companies are discovering, and this is where I will give them credit, now mistakenly so, but they're producing GLP-1 agonists, medications that trigger GLP-1 release to help with diabetes. And then here's the interesting science. GLP-1 is an enzyme, it's a polypeptide, it's a hormone, sorry, not an enzyme, it's a hormone that quickly gets broken down. And the enzyme that breaks uh, um, GLP-1 down is something called DPP-4. So what's interesting is the diabetic manufacturer is saying, okay, let's produce a GLP-1 agonist, produce something that triggers an overload of GLP-1 to help with the diabetes, and let's also give them DPP-4 antagonists. If we block DPP-4 production, the GLP-1 effect stays for longer. And that combination works extremely well. So pretty smart when they use an antagonist and an agonist together 
to keep that GLP-1 elevated, then your insulin production goes up, your insulin resistance goes down, your glucose production by the liver, which is often paradoxical where you're releasing sugar from the liver despite a high blood sugar in type 2 diabetes, is blocked. It also delays the release of fat from the, uh, um, from the fat cells. And it's a beautiful, beautiful drug that works extremely well. And while I'm not a proponent of drugs, the reason I'm doing this video is not to help to, to get you on the medication. So say, hey, use your natural GLP-1. Use your natural GLP-1. Don't eat carbohydrates, your reflux goes away. And you're not eating carbohydrates, your diabetes is getting better, your metabolic syndrome is getting better, you're losing weight. Benefit, benefit, benefit. But this is the clarification, this is the aha moment that I would love to hear gastroenterologists talk about more. Advise your patients not to eat sugar and starch. But what do we do? We tell them not to eat fat, we tell them not to drink alcohol, we tell them not to drink coffee or eat chocolate. That was the aha moment that I had, the connection with carbohydrates and reflux. I know it sounds simple, I know it sounds small, but it is enormous if you look at the reflux treatment industry. Just watch TV. You see ads for anti -re oh, my heart burns so bad, I gotta take this medication. Everybody knows what Prilosec is, because it's so common. Hmm, if I've made you think, my, I've made you understand the beauty of science and the beauty of seeing pathways that I get off on, that I just love. Join me, watch more of my videos, hit the subscribe button. I am the Carb Addiction Doc. If you want to visit about your reflux, give me a shout. Text or WhatsApp 561-517-0642. We can help you. Till next time.